Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem sum of prefix scores of strings. So this is a hard problem, but to be honest, I think it's reasonable for a hard problem. I'm not saying it's easy. If you struggled with it, that's perfectly fine. But I think by the end of this video, you'll have a really good understanding of it. I'll show you two solutions. One solution is going to be related to hash map counting specifically. And the second solution is actually going to be related to that uh, data structure that's common commonly referred to as a try, but I much prefer to call it a prefix tree because that's literally what it is. It's all about prefixes. And even that solution is going to be related to counting as well. So it's an interesting solution. This one is going to be a bit more optimal. This one is going to be a little bit easier conceptually. Let's get into the problem. So we have a nice little array of words. By the way, these are all strings, even though I don't have like the quotation marks around them. These are all strings. So what we want to do is for every single word. We want to compute the score of that word. And this is how we can compute it for a particular word. Basically take this word, get all of the prefixes of that word. So that would mean this, this, and this, every string starting from the beginning, every substring. So we get A, we get AB, and we get ABC. The entire string is technically a prefix. Now, this is the interesting part. For each of these prefixes, we wanna know how many times does it show up in the entire input array, including the original word itself. So this is how we're gonna do it. So the count of this one is going to be one because we see A shows up here like as a prefix in this word. And we also see it shows up here. It doesn't show up in any of the other words. Now suppose that this word was BA. Do you think this would count? No, because it's not a prefix. It shows up at the end, but that's not a substring that starts from the beginning. So the count of this prefix is gonna be two. This one is gonna be one, two. So this one is also two. And then this one is just gonna be one. It only shows up here. It doesn't show up in any of the other words. So that's a one. And then we take all of these, add them up, we get five. So what we do now is for every one of these words, we wanna compute the score just like we did here. And then we want to return it in the form of an array. So this one would be five. And then we'd compute the rest of these. They'd go in those spots. And then this is the array that we would return. It would look something like that. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice is that the minimum score for a given word is never gonna be less than the length of that word. Cause just take a look at here, like this has three different prefixes. I somehow got rid of the C, sorry. It has three different prefixes. Each of those prefixes is definitely gonna show up in the original word. So the minimum score this could possibly be is three. Now that's interesting. In terms of the solution, like that trick isn't gonna help us too much. It's not really gonna save us any time cause we still have to look at all of the other words as well but it's worth knowing. Now, how do we go about solving the problem? Let's at least consider a brute force solution. If we do it the way I kind of just talked about, we're gonna have to go through every word in the input. Let's say that's gonna be O of N. And then for each word, we're gonna have to scan through the entire like input string. That's gonna be another multiplied by N. And then for every single word, we are gonna have to get all the prefixes of that word, which let's say is gonna be determined by the length of each word. You could roughly say that that's L. And every time we compare that to another word, we're gonna do the same for like that corresponding word. So like this is roughly what the time complexity would be. And I think it might even be L squared. Now, the obvious optimization here is instead of taking every single word and comparing it to every other word, like to get the prefix comparison, we could do some pre-work, some pre-computation where we just take every single word, get all the prefixes of that word, and then store them in a data structure like a hash map. Not a hash set, because with a hash map, for every single prefix, we can associate it with the count of that prefix, because as you know, some of the prefixes are gonna show up multiple times. That's the whole point of this problem. So now if we do that, this problem can be solved more efficiently like this. Assuming we have that mapping, we'll go through every word just like we did before, get all the prefixes of that word. So already we know the time complexity is gonna be N times L. And in most programming languages to get the prefixes, like let's say we do slicing or something, cause you can't really manipulate a string in place. 
like to get these prefixes, it would be determined by the length of the prefix and how many prefixes are we going to have, also determined by the length of that prefix. For that reason, this, what I'm talking about, is actually going to be n times the length squared. And that'll make more sense when I code it up. But if we do that for every single word, we can then literally just take the prefix, just check the hash map, how many times did this one show up? It'll be a constant time. I think it'll be two, this one is two, this one is one. We'll add all of those up and then say that's the score of this one. Do the same thing for all of these. So that's why this is the time complexity. I'll code this up for you now. It's actually pretty easy. And then we'll get into the more optimal solution. So we know that we're going to have an array that we return. I like to just declare that up front and then say, okay, that's what I'm gonna return. So now my job is to compute the values that go in that array. And the first thing we're gonna do is some pre-work. Remember, I'm going to create a hash map, which I'm gonna call actually a default dictionary. This is very useful in Python. You can check out my Python for Coding Interviews course for some hands-on lessons involving this. So you can learn exactly how it works. But to keep it short, we're gonna go through every word in the list of words. And then we want every prefix. The easiest way to do that for me is just to have a pointer or rather an index. Some people don't like it when I call this a pointer. Um, but for I in range, the length of that word. Why am I doing this? Because I want every prefix. And to get that, we need the ending index of every single character. So like that's what this is. This is pretty much the ending index of that word the substring, I guess. And so now we'll get that word, we'll get that prefix. So starting from the beginning of that word, going up until i plus one. So this will end at index i. This is a slice. You can also learn that in the Python for Coding Interviews course. And now for this prefix, I wanna increment the count of that prefix. So I'm gonna do count of this word and increment that by one. So this is the pre-work. That's all we're doing here, just counting every single prefix, nothing fancy. Now we want to get the score of every single word. And to do that, we need the count of every prefix. So every word in the input will say the score for this word is initially zero, but once we compute it, we're going to append it to the result. And now to get that score, once again, we're gonna do kind of what we did up here. I won't copy and paste it, it'll be slightly different. We want the ending index of this word for every single position. That'll give us the prefix. So like this is gonna be the prefix. And now we wanna know the count of this prefix. So similar to what we did up there, get the count of it, which we've already computed now. And we wanna take this count and add it to the current score of the current word. So just like this, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see here that it does technically work, though this is not the optimal solution. And just to make it very clear, both of these have the same complexity, both of these loops, so I'll just look at one of them. We're going through every word. Remember, that's O of N, where N is the number of words. And then we're going through every position in that word. Let's say the length of that word is L, so we're doing this, N times L. And then in here, we're getting a slice of that word and then hashing it, of course, to like get the count of that. So that alone is going to be L as well. So this is gonna be N times L times L. So N times the length of a word squared. Now there is a more efficient solution and that's what I'm gonna show you now. The more efficient one is actually just gonna be N times L. So not like a massive improvement, I guess, but when you look at the constraints of the problem, it does become clear why the next solution is more efficient because when you scroll down here, you see that the number of words we're given, which is N, is a thousand, up to a thousand. The length of each word, which I'm denoting as L, is also up to a thousand. So actually, we can see that this is basically like taking an N cubed solution and then making it N squared. That's what the next solution is going to be. Anytime you're dealing with a prefix related problem, it's worth considering if that data structure called the prefix tree can make things more optimal. It might not be immediately clear until you actually try it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna prove to you that it's gonna be more efficient. Consider if we had a prefix tree, we'd probably want to take every single one of these words and add it to the prefix tree, similar to how we kind of did with the hash map. Remember, we took uh, every prefix from each word and we added it to the hash map. 
So if we do that, we'll get something like this. Remember that our prefix tree, given that right now our character set is lowercase a through z, we're going to have kind of a tree where it has up to 26 children for each node. The root node is practically considered empty. I guess you could consider that like the empty string for consistency, but it doesn't really matter what you consider it. Just consider it that it doesn't really do anything. It has up to 26 children though. So let's say we're adding this word. Okay, we're going to add a node now for lowercase a. And now we're going to add a child of that lowercase b and then lowercase c now we get the second word a b we don't want to create that separately that's the whole point of a prefix tree that the prefixes will be common among these imagine if this word was actually a b d what it would look like is it would overlap here but then it'd have a different child here instead of having this now in this case we already have a here and we have b here but remember what we're trying to do in the first place we're trying to count the occurrences of every prefix when we just had this word i guess you could say that the count of this prefix just a is one the count of this prefix a b is one the count of this prefix a b c is also one but now that we're adding a second word a b we're taking this prefix a and now it's already there, so we want to increment this to 2. So that's what I'm going to do. This is going to be 2 now. And then we're going to go down to B. It's also already been inserted, so we can just take the count of it and increment it to now be 2. We're going to kind of repeat this with the remaining uh, strings here. So we'll do BC now. This BC is not going to overlap here because it starts with a different prefix. It starts with B. It doesn't start with A. In the prefix tree, this tells us all the words that start with A. So we can um, go here now. Let's say this is B. And then we'll add the child C. So each of these has a count of one. And lastly, we'll add this B. So we'll see that it's already there. And so this can have a count of two now. What was the time complexity of doing this? As opposed to the hash map solution where we actually had to take every prefix manually and insert it into the hash map, this one kind of saved us some work. We actually did it character by character. So the overall time complexity of doing this was just N for all of the words multiplied by the length of each word. If this isn't clear just from the drawing, it'll probably be more clear when we actually code it up. So you can wait for that. But now that we have this, you probably know what I'm about to do. We need to compute the score of each word. So let's start with this one, A, B, C. I'm going to go character by character. I'm going to get A. I'm going to go through my tree. I'm going to see, well, this is A. So this is obviously the prefix. Every time we see a character, that's the prefix. And we can guarantee that every prefix from this word is going to exist in the try. We don't really have to worry about that because we inserted this word into the try. So what we're going to do is take the count of that node, which is two now, and maintain it. Like this is the score so far of this word. Now we're going to go to the next character. It's B. It's here to add that here. And then lastly, we'll get to C. It's one. Add that. That's five. And we'll do this for every word. So A, B is going to be here. We'll get that too. We'll go to B. We'll get that too as well. So that's going to be four. Same thing here. B, C. B is two. C is one. So that'll be three. B over here. Here is just two. So we'll get that as well. Clearly, to get the score of each word, we're basically just going down a single path. So that's determined by the length of that word. Once again, is going to lead to a time complexity of n, the number of words, multiplied by the length of the word. So this is definitely more efficient than the previous solution, though it's going to be more complicated to code up, mainly because we're going to have to implement our own custom prefix tree. Can't really use a built-in one, especially given like these counts and stuff but it's not too difficult. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Actually, before we implement our entire prefix tree, let me show you how we're gonna use it. I'm just gonna quickly define the interface for it. So we're gonna have a class, let's call it prefix tree. It's going to have a constructor, which we'll fill in later. It's also gonna have two methods, one to insert a given word, let's call it W, and a second method to get the score 
of a given word. So assuming we have this interface, even if you didn't know how to implement a prefix tree, if I gave you this interface in a real interview, you should be able to at least implement the remaining portion of this, like the input function. So once again, we'll have a result. It's gonna be an array. That's what we're gonna return. And now I'm gonna declare my prefix tree. I'm gonna create an empty prefix tree with the constructor and now we're going to go through every word in the input and we're going to once again do some pre-work, some computation, where we add the word to the prefix tree with the insert method. After that, we're going to go through every word and we're going to get the score of that word. So prefix uh, tree dot get score of that word. And once we have that score, just go ahead and append it to the result. So this is easy peasy once you have the prefix tree. So that's kind of the main difficulty of the problem. But once you've implemented a prefix tree like a handful of times, it honestly gets pretty easy. So let's just start here. Let's say that like this is the root node. Remember that each node is also going to have a score associated with it. So we can't just do something like this. We can't just say the root is going to be a tree of let's say length, or rather it's gonna be an array of length 26 where the value is zero. Cause maybe you'd try to get fancy and try to have the score stored in the array itself. But each node has to have pointers to its children. So this actually has to be put into a separate class. At least that's the easy way to code it up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say prefix node and it's going to have a constructor and that's going to encapsulate the children of that node. So let's say self.children, it's going to be an array of length 26. And initially I'm gonna make it an array of null because it doesn't have any children initially. And once it actually does have a child, that child itself will actually be a prefix node. And the index uh, zero will correspond to lowercase a, index one will correspond to lowercase b, et cetera, et cetera. And for each node, we also wanna maintain one more thing, which is the count. So that I will initially set to zero. So now, the root of the prefix tree, let's say, will be an empty prefix node. It encapsulates two things for us, the children as well as the count of that node. The root node, remember, is pretty much unused. We care about the children of the root node, so this count is never going to change, at least for the root node. Now we have these two methods to fill in. Let's start with insert. Since we're going to be kind of traversing the tree, the try as we go, we're gonna maintain a pointer to the current node. So initially that's going to be the root. And we're gonna go through every character in the word and then we're gonna do a mapping. We wanna know what index it corresponds to in that children array up above. So the easiest way to do that is to take the ASCII value of that character and subtract from it the ASCII value of lowercase a. That will create the mapping from zero to 25. And then it's possible that the node at this index already exists. And it's possible that it doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, that's the one that we're concerned about. We're gonna say, if not, the current node, if it doesn't have a child at index i, will go ahead and create one. So current.children at index i is gonna be equal to a new prefix node. So either this will execute or it won't execute, but either way, by this line, it's safe to assume that that node does exist. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna shift our current pointer to that node and we're gonna increment the count of that node because we're inserting a word, we're inserting a character, this character corresponds to that node, either it already existed or we just created it. Either way, we wanna take the count and increment it by one. After we're done with all that, there's no need to return out here, though you could if you wanted to. In Python, it's not necessary. Now we're almost done. The get score method is gonna be very similar to the insert method. So we're gonna start at the root. So let's say current is self.root. We just wanna count the score of all the nodes that correspond to this word. So we're gonna go character by character in the word we can guarantee that the node is gonna exist for this character. So let's get the index. So ord of this character subtracted by lowercase a, and then we're gonna say current is gonna be current.children at index i. We guarantee that this exists because we already inserted that word earlier. And now we wanna take this node 
and just get the count of it and add it to our current score. So we'll say score add current dot count. And then after that, just go ahead and return the score. So nothing crazy, right? Probably the trickiest part of this would just be knowing how to like structure this, structure the node. This is a little bit different than most prefix tree problems, but for the most part, we're not doing anything super fancy. And as you can see, this solution works. It's definitely more efficient, though these runtimes are pretty random on leak code. Uh, just clicking one of these to see like the more efficient ones, it doesn't look like they're doing anything different than we did. So I'm just gonna chalk it up to leak code being pretty random. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.